attack me. There are tons and tons of movies out there that have one or two scenes that are so poorly executed that they are hilarious. But it is much more rare to find movies where every single scene is unintentionally hilarious. In many cases, the creators of such rarities are auteurs who did not grow up in the USA yet decided to make American movies. Examples of such auteurs are the founders of Canon Films, the creator of Bird Demic, and the creator of Troll 2. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my god! To me, unintentionally funny movies are the best comedies. And that is probably why I have digged through hundreds of crabby movies to find the gold I'm about to present to you now. Here are my top 10 favorite unintentionally hilarious movies. Number 10 is Rambo the Intruder. The name is Rambo. The star of the movie Peter O'Brien was just on a little vacation in Indonesia where he was approached by a local film crew that thought he was Sylvester Stallone. And I must admit that the similarity is undeniable. And based on this similarity alone, he was signed for the leading role in the Indonesian take on Rambo. And the Indonesians sure know how to make movies. 30 seconds into the movie and an old lady is run over. Hey, bitch, uh, look where you're walking. I was. And a few seconds later, Rambo arrives and kicks ass. He beats the drivers with just a ball. I don't think this scene was purposefully made to be so over the top, but rather it was made to look cool. Hey, what's the matter, guys? Don't you want to play? The movie is hilarious from the start to the end, and one could almost call it a slapstick comedy. Go on, slap him. Again. Harder. Harder. Again. That's it. The plot is simple. A mob kills Rambo's wife, and Rambo takes revenge. The movie is a bit of a gem, so you won't be able to whip it up on Netflix or on Blu-ray. But instead you will have to deal with bootleg VHS rips, and it is totally worth it. The movie will likely never get a proper release in these Me Too days, as Rambo has a questionable view on women. I'm fed up with this kind of life, being cared for by a woman. So if sexy shadow dancing, hilariously bad dialogue and sped up fight scenes are your thing, this movie is a must-see. Number 9 is Virtual Combat. This movie takes a look into the future where it has become possible to dimensionalize virtual reality into reality. Please, we're not all experts in cyberplasmic theory, you know. Okay, so what this means is that in the future you can turn your favorite video game characters into flesh and blood. How cool is that? If I was living in the future, I would definitely steal the computer program and use it for evil. Warning, software robbery in progress. And of course, the first game characters to join us in the real world are six programs. And Dante, the main villain of a fighting game. This guy talks without even moving his lips. I have friends trapped in your mainframe prison. Get them out, now. That is super creepy. Part of what makes this movie so hilarious is the way it's cut. Many scenes make logically no sense. Like, how did this guy end up behind our hero totally unnoticed? And why do people always stand still until they are punched in the face? Another hilarious aspect of the movie is its cheesy sound effects. And its old school technology. If you're into cheesy sci-fi movies, you will have a blast with this one. Number 8 is Cool as Ice. This movie is what happens when you let the inventor of Kellogg's Frosties direct a movie with the one-hit wonder superstar Vanilla Ice. In 1991, Vanilla Ice was so cool he could get away with anything, even with leaving on the price tag on his cap and then to return it for a refund whenever he wants. Vanilla is such a rebel and the movie tries really hard to establish that. Hey, yo, I'm out of here. Where are you going? Across the street to uh, Slinger Schlong. 
In fact, the movie tries so hard to be fresh that it becomes super cringe. Like, what is this? But it is hard not to smile when Vanilla turns on his charms. And Cool as Ice is a great trip back to the 90s. So don't get fooled by the movie's IMDb score, because this movie is definitely not a waste of time. Oh no, you're not wasting my time, I'm just cooling. Number 7 is Star Wars. Um, no, that's not right. It's Ninja Terminator. What a great title for a movie. The movie is about some ninjas who steal a powerful sculpture and some other ninjas who also want it. And then half of the movie is about some random cool guy who beats up random people. The plot doesn't make much sense. It seems so strange. This whole thing. But who cares? It is crazy non-stop ninja action. It's probably the most ninja movie I have ever seen. It has the obligatory cool looking ninja running. It has the ninja tricks. It has the ninja flick flacks. It has ninjas cutting watermelons. It has ninjas killing crabs. It has ninja laughter. <laughs> and that is all within the first 15 minutes of the movie. From here on, the movie only gets crazier and it's all done with a straight face. Like who can take this stuff serious? As any good bad movie, Ninja Terminator also has its own awkward sex scene. Now it's time to teleport our way into the next movie. Number 6 is Rats Night of Terror. 225 years after a nuclear holocaust, the rich people have moved underground, while the new primitives have to live in their wastelands on the surface. These primitive people love sugar. This is sugar! It's sugar! <laughs> and eat flour right out of the bag. Hey, this is flour! It's flour! Well, I'm not entirely sure this is just flour. Look, I'm awake! <laughs> I'm waiting all of you! <laughs> I'm awake! The only thing that can disturb their celebrations of food is their fear of rats. Stop! What's all the screaming about? And I must say, these rats got some bite to them. As our group of primitives find an abandoned village with tons of food and living plants, they decide to stay the night. Stay for a night of terror. How could it happen? How could it happen? Unfortunately for them, the killer mutant rats come out at night. The movie is Italian, but the English dub of the movie is hilarious. Christ, you dirty beast. That's why our water gets polluted, shit! The dub probably makes many of the jokes in the movie much worse than they were in Italian. But how can we get out if we're all zipped up in here? <laughs> zipped up and zapped, eh? <laughs> Definitely check this movie out if you're looking for a post-apocalyptic movie with one of the best endings ever. Number 5 is Undefeatable. It is time to get pumped, because this movie brings some hot fighting, and the only way to cool down is with a nice cold cola. Hey, I just want to pay for this. It's on the house, kid! Oh. The movie has one of the strangest villains you'll ever meet. He rapes his girlfriend to romantic music while preparing steak and thinking of all the people he has beat to death in his death matches. As his girlfriend leaves him, he starts having some weird mother complexes. Don't leave me, mommy. And he starts killing off random women that look like her. The martial arts in the movie are actually pretty good, but the intense stares, the weird erotic swordplay, and whatever this is, makes the movie super cringe. Also, the movie has one of the most cringe fight scenes of all time. Yeah, rip it off! What can I say? I like it. Keep an eye out for you, Stingray. Yeah, see ya. Number four, The Room. This is without a doubt the most famous, so bad it's good cult movie out there and probably also the most quotable. I did not hit her, it's not true. It's bullshit, I did not hit her. I did not. 
Oh, hi, Mark. And though it was released in 2003, it still runs on a weekly basis in several cinemas spread throughout the world. The director, writer, producer and main actor of The Room, Tommy Wiseau, just brings this hypnotic awkwardness to all scenes in the movie. No one delivers a line quite like him. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Though the movie is a sad story about how an all-American hero gets betrayed by his girlfriend and best friend and then commits suicide, the movie is hilarious. Already within the first 30 minutes of the movie, we have had three cringe sex scenes. And the awkwardness continues for another one and a half hours with one weird scene after the other. I know that many of my viewers want this movie to be number one on the list and I'm sorry to disappoint. I just think that martial arts movies do cringe much better than dramas. So please don't hate me too much because of this. And instead live by Johnny's mantra and spread a bit of love. If a lot of people loved each other, the world would be a better place to live. Number three is Jim Carter. This is a weird one. So the SIA wants a gymnastics champion to win a deadly game in Pakistan, the country with the ugliest people I have ever seen. And the reason for this is that if he wins, the USA will be allowed to install a satellite monitoring station that can warn them against nuclear attacks. A Star Wars satellite station inside Pakistan could monitor all the other satellites around the world. Star Wars? Really? The plot makes absolutely no sense. Cuckoo's nest, eh? I cannot believe this movie was actually based on a book. And what makes even less sense is the Jim Carter fighting style, where karate and gymnastics supposedly combine into the deadliest martial arts of them all. And this is especially true if there are bars hanging around, or if there is a vault just standing around in the middle of the town square. The game they play is brutal, merciless really. Like seriously, how are you supposed to survive getting shot in your back? Still, I can recommend Jim Carter without flinching. Number two is Miami Connection. This movie is the brainchild of auteur Wu Sang Park. If you run into this movie while sapping around on your TV, you might at first mistake it for a quality ninja flick as both the martial arts and the costume design is pretty decent. But then scenes like this one start appearing. And this one. And this one. Like, what were they thinking? Also, the acting just gets worse and worse. My mother was Korean. And my father was black American. The plot revolves around a ninja band of orphans. We are all orphans. That perform deep and emotional songs about friendship. And of unknown reasons, some bad guys just want to get rid of them. And these bad guys are armed and dangerous. Really, that's the plot. Listen to me. I don't want to have any trouble. I just get the job from Asian. Don't bother us. Bullshit! In general, people's motivations for doing stuff in this movie are completely bonkers. He's a friend of mine from school. A friend? Shut up! And people's reactions are even worse. Like none of the heroes seem to be affected by killing tons and tons of people. But when receiving a letter, they react like this. Also, the movie has the single most awkward kissing scene in history. It is so awkward, it deserves a second showing. But if you are into awkward Taekwondo movies, this one is definitely for you. Taekwondo is not just kicking and punching. Taekwondo is right here and right here. Number one is Samurai Cop. Why did you come under? I'm an undercover cop. This movie feels like the birthday present that keeps giving. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. The samurai cop is the sexiest cop around. But the girls not only dig him for his good looks, but also for his multilingualism. They call him samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. Are you Fuj... Fujiyama? What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. The samurai cop sports an impressive hairdo. At least for half of the movie. 
as he cut off his long beautiful hair before filming had finished. This meant that he had to wear a wig in random scenes throughout the movie and it looks hilarious. Additionally, the movie is full of inconsistencies in the best possible way. Random scenes in the movie are dubbed by the director. Are you expecting anybody? No. That's a warning bell. And it's all done with a straight face, which gives the movie the perfect cheese factor. The movie is basically about how the samurai cop and his black partner take down a Yakuza gang. Captain Roma's gonna burn my ass. Yeah, he's gonna burn it. Charcoal black. <laughs> it is black. Right on. <laughs> And it is the hottest movie around. Yes, it burns. And it's gonna burn more. I will end this video with the most impressive sword demonstration you will ever see. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you later.